China has been undergoing sort of an architectural renaissance in recent years, with Beijing in particular investing millions in modernizing the city. Instead of building the tallest properties, one tower in the city decided to turn their construction into a work of art. And it's the headquarters for China's central television, yet the project was hit by numerous issues, one of which involved the property being empty for a long time. Today, we're going to examine this amazing structure. We're also going to see some other buildings the team behind the tower designed across the globe, including a stock exchange. So let's get started. Since 1987, China Central Television has had their headquarters on Fuxin Road in Beijing. However, by the early 2000s, the state-controlled broadcaster decided a change of scenery was needed. So in 2002, the design for the new building was underway. Their former headquarters would be taken over by China Media Group in 2018. The new location was selected on East 3rd Ring Road in Beijing, only 9.3 miles from their previous home. In 2003, the design of the building was released. It was unusual. Instead of going for a typical skyscraper, the architects went more creative. Essentially, the building is constructed of two vertical buildings. They're then connected with horizontal angled pieces both above and along the ground floor, leaving the center section open, almost giving the building a loop shape. In 2004, construction was underway on the new building. By 2008, the outside of the building was complete. However, there was a big setback, something which we'll delve into shortly. The CCTV headquarters would officially be completed in 2012, yet it wouldn't actually be open until 2013. Even then, most of the building remained empty for quite some time. By 2014, the building was half-filled with CCTV employees. This is likely down to the bad press and further repairs from the incident. Eventually, the other half was filled too. Altogether, the building takes up 5,090,000 square feet of space. That's over twice as big as Grand Central Station at 2 million square feet. Due to the incredible design, during 2013, the headquarters was awarded Best Tall Building Overall by the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. Sounds made up, but okay. Altogether, the CCTV headquarters is 768 feet tall and has 51 stories above ground and three below. With such an unusual design, just the planning phase would have been tricky and required a team in order to make the plans work in reality. According to reports, the cost of the headquarters is said to amount to between $795 million to $900 million, making it one of the most expensive buildings in China. On top of being a working media building, there are tours available for visitors. The tour offers sites such as information about CCTV and Beijing culture. You can also take in the stunning view of the Beijing skyline by entering the observation deck. The cost of a tour is around $10 per person. Near the top of the building is a revolving restaurant. It offers Chinese and Western buffets and barbecue. Lunch prices are around $18 per person, while dinner is around $35 each. Under the CCTV tower is the Beijing Pacific Underwater World. Around two acres is dedicated to aquatic life for tourists to see. There's penguins, jellyfish, and seal enclosures. There's also a touching pool, an aquarium tunnel, and opportunities to swim with various fish and sharks. Ah! The facility also hosts shows involving mermaids. The entry fee for Underwater World is around $14. The architectural firm that designed the CCTV tower was the Office for Metropolitan Architecture based in Rotterdam High. Holland. The project was headed by Dutch national Rem Koolhaas and German national Ole Scheren. When China was looking for designers, the Beijing International Tendering Company held a competition. Ten companies across the globe entered, yet it was subsequently won by OMA. In 2014, the president of China, Xi Jinping, conducted a public speech. Within it, he stated that China should stop creating weird architecture. Many people began looking at the CCTV building, which had been nicknamed Big Pants by locals. Shortly after those words, Koolhaas defended his work. He said that China benefits from designs like the CCTV tower. Koolhaas continued by saying he would like to discuss the president's views in person. Yeah, because you're going to change that guy's mind. As we briefly mentioned, the CCTV building has been hit by a number of controversies. Firstly, there's the design itself. In 2009, rumors began to spread that the design of the building is more risque in its origin. They believe the building to be questionably shaped like a woman. You can't have that. 
According to reports, one of the main people responsible for pushing this theory was a professor in architecture in China. They're supposedly angered by the foreign influence on China's buildings. The other issue is that a fire broke out in 2009. On the 9th of February, CCTV were celebrating the last festivities of the Chinese New Year. As such, the tower had a fireworks display. The Beijing police, fire department, and government didn't authorize the display. However, CCTV ignored the warnings and proceeded anyway. The display supposedly contained 700 pyrotechnic devices. Adjacent to the tower was the Beijing Television Cultural Center, also known as TVCC. The building was just nearing completion after a reported cost of around $730 million. It was also designed by Kuhlhaas and Sharon. The roof of the TVCC tower was set ablaze by the fireworks from their neighbor. It ravaged the building. In the end, the construction wouldn't be completed until 2012. The CCTV tower was also damaged from the fire. One firefighter sadly perished in battling the flames. The cost of the damage is estimated to be $23.4 million. The OMA have been involved in designing a number of buildings in China, one of which is the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. The design, like most OMA projects, is different to typical buildings. The structure is formed with a vertical tower and a raised base, making the Stock Exchange building look like a sword. Construction on the site began in 2008 and was open for use in 2013. It's 806 feet tall and has 49 floors altogether. The cost is reported to have amounted to around $500 million, which is a drop in the ocean compared to Shenzhen Stock Exchange's market capitalization, as that was valued at $2.5 trillion in 2019. On top of their work in Asia, OMA has also worked on projects in the U.S. This time, it was the Seattle Central Library. OMA worked with Seattle-based firm LMN Architects to create the building. Construction began in 1999. The new building was vastly needed. The previous library had 206,000 square feet of space, well under the required amount for an increasing population like Seattle. By 2004, the library was open to all. It now had 362,987 square feet in total, with the computer space going from 75 to 400 PCs altogether. The new library was constructed with a budget of $165.9 million, 10 million of which went towards a temporary library while the massive one was being constructed. The new structure was a big hit with the public. In its first year, the local economy was boosted by $16 million from the new library. OMA might be looking to design a building in every continent. This time, their talents took them to Australia. In 2016, the new plans for what is now called the Western Australia Museum Bula Bardip in Perth was unveiled. The price tag was set to cost $428.3 million Australian dollars. That's around $328 8 million US dollars, by the way. The design incorporated a modern design with the more traditional heritage buildings. The final building was open to the public in November 2020. Now for the OMA's current project in Europe. It's in the midst of being constructed in Manchester, England. The building will be named The Factory. It'll be home of the Arts Gala, the Manchester International Festival. The plans were made in 2017 and construction broke ground in 2019. It's expected to be finished at some point in 2021. The venue has been designed to incorporate a range of art, such as dance, theater, music, opera, visual arts, and so on. The 143,000 square foot project originally had construction costs totaling 130.6 million pounds, which is around $180 million. Recently, the project received a further budget increase, taking it to 185 million pounds, or $255 million. It's believed the factory will boost Manchester's economy by 1.1 billion pounds, or $1.5 billion, over the next 10 years. Final fact finish, one of the world's most expensive buildings also works in technology and media and is based in California. With an estimated construction of $5 billion, Apple Park is also one of the most valuable facilities in the world. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.